Right now at noon, an Oklahoma wildlife park is able to open weeks after receiving thousands of dollars in storm damage thanks to the help of the community. And no severe weather in our forecast, but more scattered storms are on the way. We'll have a look at that forecast for you coming up. Plus, the Miami City Council discusses the financial future of a senior center. The four states most watched news starts now. The KBI is investigating an officer involved shooting in Coffeyville, Kansas. This is KOM News at noon. I'm Elise Snowy. The incident happened yesterday afternoon just after 3 p.m. near 4th Street and Poplar Place. Coffeyville police conducted a traffic stop on a Ford pickup truck driven by 33 year old Derek J. Trotter of Coffeyville, who was connected to an active investigation. Preliminary information indicates that the officers tried to detain Trotter to serve a search warrant for items in his possession. Trotter began to fight back as officers tried to place handcuffs on him. During the fight, officers deployed tasers, but with no effect. One officer pulled their firearm and fired three rounds, striking Trotter. Officers then began to render aid and EMS transported Trotter to the Coffeyville Regional Medical Center where he was pronounced deceased. No law enforcement officers were injured in the shooting and the KBI will conduct a thorough and independent investigation into this officer involved shooting. Once completed, the findings will be presented to the Montgomery County attorney for review. Now let's check in with Chris Warner for a look at the forecast. Yeah, isolated showers and storms were a thing we were expecting. We have not seen very many of them, hence the whole isolated point. We still have this clear slot out here where we're going to get enough warming that will eventually have additional thunderstorms trigger. We are starting to see a few little showers try to get going out there. We've got one in Jasper County flared up on the northeastern side of Joplin, but it's kind of died out and spread out. So most of this rain, unfortunately, not reaching the ground, but you can see the clouds that are billowing off of it. It did try to get going. It just wasn't very successful. And we've got some additional shower activity uh, back toward uh, the west of Burlington into Greenwood County, just west of Eureka right now. So uh, present, not a lot going on out there. Most rain is falling in Benton County, but again, over the next little while, we'll see some additional development. MoDOT camera 20th and range line in Joplin. It is mostly cloudy out there, and we're getting the same from our camera in downtown Pittsburgh, but still some sunshine getting through as well. Started yesterday at 73, made it up to 99. Not going to be anything like that today. We're sitting at 85 in Joplin, 84 in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh and temperatures right now low to mid 80s across the region with some upper 80s a little further south and west through the rest of the evening. Scattered thunderstorms out there will eventually fall back into low 70s by midnight. We'll have a full look at your forecast, including the Labor Day weekend here in just a few more minutes. Elise. All right, thanks, Chris. And don't forget, you can be the first to know about the day's weather with the KOAM Sky Watch Weather app. You can get a severe weather updates sent straight to your phone free of charge. It's available in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. The KOAM Sky Watch Weather app. The well, Granby, Missouri Police Department will soon have some new bulletproof vests. It's thanks to a $2,300 check from Hero Fund USA. It's an organization that raises money to help first responders buy life saving equipment. Grand BPD officials say the vest will allow their officers to better serve the community, knowing they are better protected themselves. Oh, they, yeah, they're heaven sent. Uh, like I said, uh, it's, uh, it's a must to have uh, ballistic vests in law enforcement uh, this day and age. So they have, uh, they've been great to us. Hero Fund USA is based out of Blue Springs, Missouri. Well, the Miami Senior Center officially turned itself over to the city of Miami last night. They made the move due to a lack of funding. Now, the city considered taking legal action to ensure the senior center was transferred in accordance with their bylaws, but decided against doing so. The city discussed taking on various finances like fixing the roof and other things at their discretion. For the city, we're just going to have to juggle a few things to get the budget squared away for the rest of the year to get it through, and then we'll budget it in just like any other facility uh, going forward. The city will allow DOCS, the food delivering service, to remain at the senior center and continue serving senior citizens. We'll take a look at this brush pile fire at Solid Waste in Miami, Oklahoma yesterday. Officials say the city did not set the fire and the fire chief says his department doesn't know how it started. Officials say the fire will need to burn out. 
Well, an Oklahoma Wildlife Park is working to reopen just two weeks after receiving thousands of dollars in storm damage. And the park director says they are working to rebuild better than ever thanks to the community's help. KOM Samantha Walker has more. This is just a bit of what the Creation Safari Wildlife Park saw when strong winds and severe storms swept through Ottawa County in mid-August. The storms caused severe damage to the park, such as destroying bird enclosures. The majority of them was like complete destruction. They were just gone, um, laying out in the fields, you know, to the east. And so, um, remarkably, um, the animals were all okay. Um, no, no animals got hurt, but uh, we're, we're very, very fortunate um, that uh, we didn't have animals injured and, and more damage to the park. Tim Sappington, the park's owner and director, estimates the park received roughly $50,000 in damage from the storms. Within an hour, people started messaging us and asking, how can we give to this? What do you guys need? People from all across the community are coming together to help the wildlife park reach their goal of rebuilding bigger and better. We had a really remarkable thing happen in a few days to follow. Um, IS Customs, a construction company, has offered to um, bring their guys and rebuild our bird enclosures. And Wyandot Nation has funded all of the materials for the bird enclosures. Thanks to this community support, they're now able to open up right before their busiest weekend of the year. We've come to expect that we live in a great community. Um, and people reach out to help, you know. We try to reach out and help others, and others have reached out to help us. So we have an amazing community here. Reporting in Wyandotte, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. The Creation Safari Wildlife Park will open today for the first time since the storms. Well, a medical clinic in Joplin is trying to educate young people on sexually transmitted infections. That story is coming up. And later, we're making sweet pickle slaw in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Now, STIs, or sexually transmitted infections, is a subject people might not want to talk about. But Choices Medical Services in Joplin wants to educate the community, especially young people, about the STI rate in our area and the nation. And as KOEM's Lonnie Walton shows us, the number of cases are alarming. For the first time ever in our clinic's history in 2023, and we're on track for 2024, we're actually going to have higher numbers of syphilis positive cases than gonorrhea. And Misha Long is the Director of Nursing at Choices Medical Services in Joplin. She says young people make up half the cases reported. Of those, gonorrhea, chlamydia, and then syphilis, that's 2.5 million cases in a single year, and the CDC says 50% of those cases, those new cases, would be in the ages 15 to 24. So high school to college age, even though that percentage of our population is a small percentage, those individuals make up 50% of the new cases each year. In our area, the numbers are even higher. Missouri specifically is above the national average for HIV, syphilis, gonorrhea, and chlamydia for all of those infections. Chelsea Delgado, Choices Prevention Service Director, says there are several reasons why these numbers are so high. When you're dating and you're a teenager, you're not likely to enter into a marriage-like relationship. You're more likely to have several back-to-back -back relationships. Before you jump into your next relationship, Long says it's a good idea to know your status. At the end of the day, these statistics reflect people. And so we want to be able to serve people, serve them well, and make sure they are healthy and making healthier choices. Reporting in Joplin, I'm Lonnie Walton, KOAM News. Choices Medical Services also helps those facing human trafficking situations. Well, heart experts say there's an important medical check that's often being neglected. New research from Poland shows measuring your lipoprotein levels can help prolong your life. Now, lipoprotein levels are determined by genetics and they can show whether you're at risk for heart attack, stroke, or other cardiovascular diseases. Doctors say routinely checking those levels could help catch diseases early. 
Well, if you catch up on sleep on the weekends, it turns out you're helping lower your risk of heart disease. A study by the European Society of Cardiology found people who don't get enough sleep during the week but get more sleep on the weekends had a 19% lower chance of heart disease. Ideally, though, doctors say you should get at least seven hours of sleep every night. Well, still to come on KOAM News at noon, Mr. Food. This weekend, it's time to have one last summertime fling, and we have just the thing to make it extra special. And we've got some cooler temperatures and a few more storm chances out there. We'll take a look at that forecast when the KOAM News at Noon returns. Welcome back to the KOAM News at Noon. So we discussed the possibility of an isolated shower or storm between the morning hours and uh, say about 3 o'clock. And well, it's what we've had. Extraordinarily isolated showers out there. And Skywatch Storm Tracker showing some extraordinarily isolated showers. But that is going to be the case for us, at least for the next couple of hours, as we anticipate more activity to begin developing. So we had this shower. It was actually somewhat organized. You can see the top of this thing as it tried to get going as a thunderstorm, and it just did not have the energy to go. And now we've got light rain, probably most of that not even reaching the ground at this point. Now what is reaching the ground are some slightly better showers. We've had a few more of those flare up from just southwest of Burlington, northwest of Yates Center, back through Green Wood County into the west of Twin Grove, south of Eureka. Nothing crazy out there. And the good news is, again, we're not anticipating any severe weather by any means, but we are expecting some additional shower and thunderstorm development. You can see the clouds beginning to thicken up out ahead of all of this, but we still have that clear slot out there as well. And that's going to allow one zone here to warm up just enough that we're going to start to see a few more thunderstorms begin to develop as we head through the afternoon. So there's noon. That's what we're seeing out there now. Here we are at two. Now we start to see a few more of these scattered showers and storms developing around the area. And these will continue through the evening. Now we're going to be looking more so at light rain and maybe a thunderstorm or two across southeastern Kansas by this evening with that thunderstorm activity. Almost if, if I-44 just continued straight northeast, it'd be right along that point out there. And then we'll go into the overnight hours and we'll continue with scattered showers and thunderstorms. And some of these could produce some heavy rain at times. And they'll continue into our Saturday afternoon. But as we go further into the day Saturday, they will become considerably more isolated. Then later in the day we could see some additional development right along and south of I-44 of a few more thunderstorms. Now between all of that, we're still not anticipating any kind of severe weather, which is definitely good news. We do not need it by any means. All right, here's a look at temperatures out there. There's that warm slot that's forming right here in the sunshine. So 86 in Parsons, for example, 88 Benita, 87 in Nawada. So we've got low to mid 80s out there. Save Bentonville. They actually were getting some rain earlier, got some thicker cloud covers, so sitting at 74. We're still on track for those highs around 90, but Today, with all the moisture in the air and everything else, we do have some heat index values. We're, we're starting to get into the upper 80s and some low 90s, but the good news is also these aren't going to be as awful as they have been the last several days. So the majority of us, highs capping out at about 90 degrees. Some of you a little further to the west, probably capping out at your highs about now with the clouds and those additional thunderstorms developing. Northwest breeze around 5 to 10, mostly cloudy skies, and of course those scattered storms continuing into the evening, falling just a bit below normal for many of us into the upper 60s, calm wind, and again, heavy rain possible at times. So that's something to keep in mind as well. If you're driving late tonight or early tomorrow morning, do watch out for the potential for some minor flash flooding that could occur with some of the heavier rain. Nothing widespread, but just watch out out there. Check this out. We should be in the upper 80s for our highs, low to mid 80s for our Saturday northeast breeze at 5 to 10 and again some isolated to widely scattered showers and storms we're looking at some isolated pop up showers or storms maybe a couple of those on Sunday a little warmer upper 80s we'll be on a bit of a roller coaster ride of low to mid to upper 80s over the next several days but that's kind of the key we're going to be hanging out in the 80s for the foreseeable yeah. future. Nice Labor Day out there mm -hmm. and some additional shower and thunderstorm chances in the second half of next week. But all in all, not bad. Not bad at all. All right. Thanks, Chris. We'll stick around. We're making sweet pickle slaw in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. We'll be right back. Howard is sharing his recipe for sweet pickle slaw in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. With this weekend being Labor Day, which happens to be the unofficial end of summer, many of us will be squeezing in that last minute barbecue or getting the whole family together for some kind of shindig. After eating burgers and hot dogs with all the usual go-alongs all summer long, I wanted to share a new twist on coleslaw 
that I think will be very welcome. For the dressing, we combine mayo, some sweet pickles that we've chopped up, a bit of pickle juice, a splash of vinegar, sugar, celery seed, and a touch of salt. As for the type of pickles, they can be sweet pickle chips, baby gherkins, or even sweet and spicy pickles if you want a bit of a kick. Now we toss this with a bag of coleslaw mix, or you can always cut up a head of cabbage and grate some carrot if you want. This is one of those dishes where everyone will try to guess what the secret ingredient is. If you tell them, that's up to you. I mean, what's not to love about creamy coleslaw with an extra burst of flavor that you can only get from our pickles? To get this simple recipe, all you have to do is go to our website and type in sweet pickle slaw. It's that easy. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a picklicious way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Mm. You can find this recipe along with a lot more good food from the Mr. Food Test Kitchen online. Just go to our website. That's koamnewsnow.com. Now here's a look at the four state market prices. All right, we're continuing to see a few isolated scattered showers out there now. More scattered showers and storms as we go through the afternoon and evening. No severe weather expected at this point, but a stray strong storm or two may be possible. So just keep an eye out there. A few more isolated to widely scattered storms Saturday. Better chances east of 69 by the afternoon. Maybe a pop up shower storm on Sunday. A little warmer upper 80s. Mid 80s for Labor Day, partly cloudy and dry. And then we have additional shower and thunderstorm chances in the second half of next week. So some more much needed rain on the way. But the big thing is it's really just this roller coaster ride of those temperatures go from the low 80s to the upper 80s to the mid 80s to the low 80s to the mid. But we're yeah. the key message here is we're hanging <laughs> out in the 80s. So yeah, we're gonna we be finally at made or it below where we should be. So we'll take it. Absolutely. All right. Well, coming up tonight at five endometriosis is a painful condition that affects one in 10 women. Experts say it can take years to get diagnosed diagnosed because so little is known about the condition. We're going to learn about new research that could lead to a non-invasive way to confirm it. Plus, the KOM Roadshow will be live tonight for the 5 and 6 p.m. newscast in downtown Pittsburgh to help paint the town red. And we'll hear from Myoma, Oklahoma schools about how a recent statewide change in test scoring is affecting student progress. You can join us for those stories and more on KOAM News at 5. Lots to look forward there tonight. Absolutely. Enjoy, Julie. All right. Well, that's the news for now. Thank you for joining us on KOAM News at noon. Have a great rest of your day.